On this episode, we're actually going to spill the beans and tell you our plans for the next six months. Where are we going to sail to next? Is Takana going to be our forever home? All right. But first, we're going to start the day off right. You can't have serious, deep and meaningful conversations on an empty stomach. They never go down well. So as part of our morning routine, we'll first cook up a storm in the galley and then I'll drop the bombshell you may or may not have seen coming. Oh, we thought we'd get underway early because of these storms that start blowing up in the afternoon. We're in the Great Barrier Reef, heading south to escape cyclone season in the tropics. Today, our goal is to make it to Keswick Island. If we get there by two o'clock, we can then batten down the hatches. One of my favourite contraptions in a kitchen is this. Not sure if it's an Aussie thing or not, but it's a toaster. And so I literally just put it on the gas stove like this and as you can see it starts to get really hot. Toast cooks in like 30 seconds. Just lay them on top like that. And when I'm ready I'll just ooh, like that. It's the perfect solution when you don't have power or the inverter on. Alright! Just make sure you turn off the gas. Hello! So from eggs to spilling the beans, I'll break up the announcement into two parts. Part one, our jobs. Oh yeah, it's a good buddy feeling. Got my music in my ears, the sun's shining. I'm getting a little emotional at the moment. We've got to weigh up all these options of work. We're able to keep the boat and continue sailing, which is definitely what we want to do. You see, I quit, so I don't really have to go back to a job, and this has accidentally become my new one. But for John, as an airline pilot, he was able to put his career on ice for one whole year during the pandemic. But now, if you've been to any airport lately, it is chaos. Massive flight delays, long lines, lost luggage at the peak of the travel season. There have been job shortages and aviation can also be a difficult industry to get into. Being a pilot is a, an easy task here in Australia. It's not like you can just quit and then get back into the industry like that. He's been working for the airline for almost a decade now. He's reached a point in his career where he has seniority, he has experience. You know, you just don't want to let that go. He's very lucky. He's got a great job with a reputable airline, one of the biggest in Australia. So what we're thinking is John will go back to flying and then while he's at work, I'm going to continue editing our sailing videos. I'm a little behind, so a break from the water will allow me to catch up to real time. In other words, I'll still be posting weekly, so if I time it properly, there'll be no break between our Aussie adventure and our upcoming Euro trip. John's taking leave next year, but my ultimate dream would be for us to convince him to take another little career break so that we can focus on YouTube full time together. I don't want to have to go out on my own because that could be a disaster. John! When you send Christina out for her first solo mission on the tender. How you going? I'm trying to... Oh, okay. Bloody hell. As some of you may know, we had a dream of one day buying a boat over in Europe. And then the pandemic hit. John was stood down from his job without pay. And after months of lockdown, we packed up our apartment and purchased Takana in Australia. We left our home with a couple of weeks sailing experience. We've since sailed up the coast of Australia to the Great Barrier Reef. But now that travel and borders are back open again, we want to pursue the original plan and get to Europe. If you watched our Greece series a few months back, we had a taste in the Cocladas when we chartered a boat with Navigare and it was a real eye opener. Like it was our first time sailing overseas and sailing another boat. And to be honest, we think about getting back there every day. We're trying to work out a way whereby we can continue sailing and following our passions and exploring the world with you guys. For it to work, we're going to be saving up for the next adventure. We can't wait to share all the details with you, but I want to take a second to thank you for subscribing, for sharing our videos with your friends, for chatting with us in the comments section or leaving a like. You may not realize at the time, but you're helping us along the way. And it's the reason why we make these videos and keep coming back every week. Christina's been down here editing. Yeah, I've been editing all day. So John's been the, the 
captain of the ship. And if you're a real legend, you can support us directly. Consider joining our Patreon where I release videos early, share extra behind the scenes content and plan to do live chats. Trying to work out different ways of how we can make this continue to work. So what does the future hold for our boat to Kana? Well, I'll save that for part two. Just give me a couple of minutes while we approach and anchor off Keswick Island. <laughs> So we are just arriving yeah, yeah. to Keswick. Looks like it's gonna be pretty busy. Just gonna put the sails down, taking the main sheet off and getting ready to furl the heady away first. It's actually a little bit northwest, so I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna be like in here, we'll see. Well, we've heard that the snorkeling's pretty good here. So we might be able to go for a dip. We'll have to take the tender off the bow because we put it away this morning because this was about a four or five hour sail. We didn't want to drag it behind us the whole way. Beautiful blue water here. It's currently high tide. Keswick is a green, lush, great barrier reef island. 80% of it is national park, while the other 20% was recently purchased by Oasis Forest, formerly China Bloom, as part of a 99 year lease for $20 million. There's a massive fringing reef, so you can't tuck in too far. Yeah, right. It's gonna be interesting. Sail furled and preventer packed away. We then turned into wind. Yeah, it's bloody windy. What's going on here? Centered the boom. We're going to take the wind out of our sails and brought down the mainsail. As I winch in the main sheet, you can see the boom centers. I then swap out the line with the main halyard to lower the sail. Sometimes, if there is too much load on the jammer, it won't open. So I have to take the load off by winching it a little more. The jammer then opens with ease. Are you gonna go up? Allowing me to lower the sail. You got it? Which falls into the boom bag. Good on. Good on ya. With the engine on, we're still moving through the water towards the anchorage. So it's my turn to get the snubber and get to the bow. All right, so we are getting ready to anchor. That's what about 50 meters of chain looks like. I should mention a few weeks back, John attempted to install a chain counter, which would allow him to raise and lower the anchor remotely from the helm. So he wouldn't need to rely on me to use this control at the bow. At the time of installation, I had an epiphany. So John's just installed the chain counter and I've realized something. Am I useless to you now? What do you mean? Well, the fact you have a chain counter no, nobody can count chains quite like you can. And it turns out I'm more reliable. We didn't get around to troubleshooting the new chain counter and here I am counting the chain. Now, I don't want to get too big for my boots, but John and I aren't seeing eye to eye on something. I honestly think it should be a legal requirement for people to have binoculars on board. I just got these from Adelaide. My mum had a spare pair and my eye shit. I Eyesight is <laughs> Eyesight isn't good. It's poor. And I take these out every single day now. I bloody love them. But John, your eyesight's pretty amazing. You can't make everything a legal requirement though, can you? you can't mandate everything. Who thinks that it should be a legal requirement? You know what? The problem with this being a legal requirement is that everyone would see us when we're walking around the nude. Well, that would that would At their own risk. Well, we've settled in, so let's get on to part two, where we talk about the future of Takana. It's quite the bombshell. Some of you may or may not have seen it coming. John and I have gone over this decision a million times. It's a real fork in the road for us, but we've come to the conclusion with new opportunities arising, we're going to be selling Takana. We have some really exciting sailing plans for Europe in the pipeline. There's a lot of work happening in the background as we speak ahead of this next adventure. We're gonna make a few phone calls this week. So how did these decisions all come about? While we were in Annapolis, we met some amazing people and we struck up an incredible idea. So as soon as we can, we'll tell you more about this really exciting collaboration. But more on that later. For now, on the map, we're about here. 
and we still have to sail all the way down here to Brisbane, where we're going to be selling to Kana while the market is still hot. As you guys know, we started sailing with pretty much no experience and every week you've encouraged us in the comments section, reminding us of how much we've progressed. It's been really encouraging because when you live and breathe it every day, you forget how far you've come. Wait for us to go through. But now's not the time for us to get complacent because we will be hit by unforgiving storms over the next few months together. There's a lot more to learn. It is bucketing down. Stick with us as we make our way down south. Storms definitely came. And with some luck, sell to Kana in Brisbane. But we have to get there first, and this new season, bringing swell, is a whole new ball game. Not feeling great at the moment, feeling a little bit seasick for the first time in a while. Probably a bit out of practice. Yeah, a bit out of practice in this weather. Haven't had swell like this in a while. We've been very, very blessed and lucky, haven't we? The season's sort of changing and we just got the life jackets out with the tethers as well, just in case things get a little bit unsettled. You know, there's a fine line where you feel like you need to start getting prepared. So we're checking the Bureau of Meteorology side frequently. How would you describe the Bureau of Meteorology? It's like a government facilitated Bureau weather. The Bureau of Maybe people over in America, they wouldn't, would they? Do they call it the Bureau of Meteorology in the US and oh, in the UK? Business. Anyway, we're checking that. We've got the full main out at the moment. So we're thinking that we might have to put a reef in at some stage. And before we arrive to Middle Percy, I just want to say thank you for continuing to support us through this next phase, these next few months, as we try to get Takana back in one piece. Oh gosh, this is well and truly stuck. It's stuck. I'm just gonna ask, can you please do this? Yeah. Now, okay. like see if well. you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Your eyes look really blue today. Am I fixing this? Well, you fix it. No, <laughs> no, I come back. I'm laughing because you fix everything on the boat. You fi you're the fix it. See, you fix everything on this boat. You see, it's not about the destination, it's the journey. And we have a long way to go. I hope you're excited to jump on board for the ride. So we put a lot of love and heart into them. So if you're watching- Why is your face so yellow? <laughs> what happened? Is it really? Is that a face yellow? I put fake hair on it yesterday. <laughs> John thinks I look like an Oompa Oompa. 